So, as you know, as he comes on, you know, I would like to invite him here, Dr. Ray. One of the things that I want to share with you on a personal note, I was in the audience when you spoke at the University of North Texas, and I, w I must confess that your ability to synthesize different cultures and bring it in a harmonious way to make it relevant to the audience was very, very inspiring. Thank you. Everybody, please give a warm Texas welcome to Dr. Ray. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to speak. I will necessarily have to be brief because I have to catch a flight back to Houston. I came in because I can't say no to uh, Mr. Mago. Uh, I'd like to, I mean, I, he, he told me what uh, his full name is. It's Always Kind Mago. That's apparently what uh, AK stands for. And he's been extremely uh, kind to me, at least, much of the time. When uh, I heard Assistant Secretary of State Biswal speak, uh, it was a bit of a shock because she basically took all my talking points. Uh, the, uh, the essential uh, uh, point that I was going to make today was the strength of the India-US relationship and, and she made all the, uh, 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 she uh, basically said most of uh, what had to be uh, said. The, the story of the uh, Indian community here parallels and complements the story of India. You know, there's a book which came out recently about uh, uh, India-US relations, and the book is actually uh, describes the relationship in terms of 10 crises. That was history. Today, the success of the Indian community here in the United States has built in India an enormous goodwill for the United States, family story by family story. It is very difficult to meet an Indian who does not have a relative or an acquaintance in the United States and who has almost invariably had a good experience. Yeah, so this goodwill that, uh, uh, that exists for the uh, United States uh, in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in India today is because of the success of, this, of the Indian community here and because of a country like the United States which allows a community like this to succeed. As uh, Assistant Secretary Biswal took most of my points, I will spend a few minutes talking about what, what, what kind of a country is India like now? You know, you're all businessmen here or people related with uh, uh, business. You have skin in the game. You're going to uh, invest money in India. So what is the kind of uh, partner that you are uh, uh, doing business with? Who are you trying to sell or buy from? And um, I will refer to uh, three uh, uh, characteristics of our uh, society at this present stage of uh, time. I'd like to describe them as uh, national characteristics. And uh, these are something like this. The first is a story about how we have been able to overcome challenges. We have... Uh, in the 1950s, you know, we, when we became independent in the 1940s, Winston Churchill, who was then uh, the Prime Minister of Great Britain at that time, was one of the most powerful men in the world. And Winston Churchill said that India is a geographical expression like the equator. It is basically, it's not a country and has no chance of succeeding. Those of you who remember the 1950s will remember that this was a land of poverty. In the 1960s, the, the, the the belief was that India would not be able to hold together as a country. In the 1970s, we were dismissed as a socialist country. In the 1980s, what they used to say about us is that we are permanently on the runway. We're never going to really take off. In the 1990s, when we began to reform, the refrain was, we will, uh, you know, we will never really reform, we will always hold back. When we began to reform in the 2000s, the belief was that this was a land of crony capitalists. Today, the story is it's botched reform. Uh, it's, and what I'd like to tell you is that we, will, we have overcome all of these. Okay. 
We have proven people wrong decade after decade after decade. What does it tell you about us? There's a certain, that there's a certain audacity about the way we dream. We have a track record of success. Difficult to believe, but this is a successful country. We have an enormous capacity to introspect and to correct course. We talk to ourselves continuously. The media is free. There's a lot of things that are written about it, but that's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of a society that makes up its mind slowly, derivatively, and takes everybody along while doing so. The second characteristic of India that is, I think, uh, striking is we are in a, I, I don't have a term for it, but I like to describe ourselves as full spectrum managers or administrators. What do I mean by that? I'll try to explain it by giving three examples. So we are trying to open tertiary medical, uh, uh, world-class tertiary medical centers uh, uh, in India. We are also trying to provide basic medical health to our citizens. We are also trying to free India of open defecation. The Prime Minister of India speaks from every pulpit about it. So this whole spectrum, it's not one challenge that we are facing in one area. We have to provide world-class tertiary medical care. We have to provide basic medical services. We have to make India open defecation free. And we have to do all three simultaneously, not one after the other. In, uh, my understanding is that there was, the industrial revolution was followed by a sanitation revolution uh, in, in, in the Western world. The stories of Delhi now, the fog, remind me of the stories or the, or the things that I read in history of a London pea super fog. During the Industrial Revolution, the fog in London was so thick that you couldn't see ahead. So we are trying to replicate this, that sanitation revolution in India, but we have to do it simultaneously along with the Industrial Revolution. Another uh, example of this is the war on poverty. You know, there are Indians living on less than $2 a day hundreds of millions of them. We're at war with it, and what are the weapons we use? We use the most modern weapons, biometrics, mobile phones, cashless transactions. We have to transfer money into the accounts of people who don't earn $2 a day. At the same time, we have unicorns, companies with market capital, six or eight of them, who are working on this market. So this, this spectrum that we work on is, 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 uh, is unique. In education, because of a midday ski, me, uh, meal scheme in India, we are able to bring most of our children to school. We, are also, uh, we have also launched the cheapest mission to Mars. I met somebody who works in ISRO a little earlier. And while we bring our children to school and teach them to read and write, we will create a network of, of, of cutting edge research institutions. We, when, we, when we began our national effort to develop ourselves 50 years ago or 70 years ago, we did not have primary schools. At that time, our leaders invested in the IITs, the IIMs and the medical colleges and we produced some of the best doctors and engineers in, 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 in the world. And the same, the same bandwidth, this, uh, the, the, we have to address all this in, 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 uh, simultaneously. It's a, it's a difficult challenge. It's a very difficult challenge. The other uh, thing that the last point that I'll talk about is the speed of, at which we change. You know, my father was born in 1936. He was born a subject of the British Empire. India was a colony at that time. In 1945, India joined the United Nations as a subject nation. About 40, 45 years after that, his son, I think not 45, how would it, about 55 years after that, his son, that's me, I, I sat in the UN Security Council as a representative of Free India. And an India which will become the next permanent member of the Security Council. My father told me that he survived the Bengal famine of 1943. And he says that I've seen people dying of hunger. We are today the fastest growing economy in the world. And we did 
all this in the, in the course of one lifetime. This transformation from, uh, from basically a colony, from a country where life expectancy was 36 years in 1947 to where we are today, uh, a beacon of democracy, the fastest growing economy in the world, the uh, a source of intellectual capital, a source of people like the Indian community here who are the pride of both India and America, all this was done in the course of one lifetime. That is one of the most, as far as I know, remarkable transformations in human history, in, his, uh, in human history. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I would like to end by telling all of you, do business with India. You can't go wrong there. You know, you'll, uh, there's a lot of money to be made. There are uh, good business opportunities in whichever area that you look at. If there's anything that I can do uh, to help you in that area, I'm at your service. Thank you very much.